Samsung now surprisingly 3-0 and at the top of the table. I would not have expected that <laughs> a couple weeks ago. I, I would not have expected that at all. So that means it's time to move on to our second match, guys. It's going to be EM Fire versus Jin Air. Now, speaking of things you may not have expected at all, Jin Air coming off of a 2-0 against SK Telecom. And on paper, you'd think that would make them a real easy winner in this match versus EM Fire, right? You'd think that, right? But this is also a Jin Air that got 2-0'd in the first week of competition yeah. by Longju. And I think a lot of that game one was competitive when they had Trace. When they switched over to So On, they looked a little bit lost. So I think that Trace being the veteran on the team, even though he's not maybe as mechanically sound as So On, even though he may not be able to have the same depth of champion pool, he provides a lot in terms of stability and leadership within the game. Yeah, and he is starting today, too. We do have Trace in the top yep. lane uh, right off the bat. So good start for Jin Air, I suppose. We'll find out if they're able to actually turn it into another win. First, though, we'll take a look at EM Fire, the uh, kind of the the shell of what was Najin EM Fire. Now they're just EM Fire. And they have none of their former players, except yep. for players who were previously substitutes for the team is a little bit interesting. Of course, Guger coming back from the LMS where he was known as Lupin, the AD carry of Taipei Assassins now at the support role. Sol, uh, another former EM Fire bench player, Edge, a bench player for KT Rolster last year. Yeah, Guger was on uh, Najin's sword way back in 2014. Yes, but never, a is, never is a starter. He played yeah. some games in Masters, but that was about it. So, Definitely an underdog of a team. But you know what, Doha? They did better than I thought they would. Did they lose 2-0? Yes, they did. But did well, they? They also lost to Samsung, who apparently is good. So I guess so. We'll find out if that lasts or not. Their opponents are the Jin Air Green Wings. Of course, lacking GBM this season as he is uh, tearing it up in NA now. But and aside from that, a really strong team. Like This, this is a pretty sick lineup. It, you know, it's it's pretty good, and they're starting to get some cohesion. They came out against SK Telecom with a triple AD carry strat with Graves, or Trace's top lane Graves, which SKT did not ban in game number two and really paid the price for that. Winged had probably the best game of his career in game number two against yeah. Bengi. Absolutely went nuts out of the jungle. But he hasn't been able to consistently show a high level of jungle play. Usually, he actually fares quite poorly in terms of his jungle pressure, so we'll have to see if he got lucky or whether he can actually level up his game on the whole. Well, that's the question. I mean, it's it's great to get a big win against a team like SK Telecom you know, to, to beat the current world championships always feels good, but it's these matches that you need to take equally as seriously because if you beat SKT and then lose to Empire or even go 2-1 against the Empire, it puts a big asterisk on uh, your team right now. Yeah, and certainly they're still working through the kinks. They yeah. had a rather disastrous game two against Longju last week. But the Graves top, I think it has to be banned. Trace will just play it. He played it beautifully in the series against SK Telecom and really carried them both through lane pressure and for the, his ability to rack up kills on that particular champion. I think it is exciting. I mean, you do see stuff a little bit different than what we're seeing with some of the other teams from Jin Air. Maybe we'll see more of that today by the M-Fire. Better than you thought they would be, but they're going to need to be better well, than you thought they would be they're also, more. They're also doing really weird things like playing Nautilus top with double 80 carries in their last two games yeah. or their only two games of the season. I'm not really sure that's going to be a viable strategy. Not so sure either, but we'll see what they pick. EM Fire versus Jenner game one. Picks and bans. And we'll have to see what the teams do not want to play against. It's not a good sign when Hippo, your top laner, only has two games of Nautilus top. Now they've only played two games, but we need to see some more conventional picks out of this guy. Yeah, I mean, you can do those kind of funky picks in uh, solo queue, and, and Hippo is known as being a very good top Rek'Sai player, but in the pro matches, you kind of have to lean more towards the meta unless you've got a really good reason not to. So Lulu and Tom Kench. Yep. First two bands of our second series of the evening. And there is Graves taken out of the pool, which is smart. Hey, SK Telecom, maybe you should have banned Graves in game number two. Good job, EM Fire. Maybe. maybe. 
they watch that match. They're like, not us. That's not going to happen to us. We may lose, but we're not going to lose to Top Graves. Congratulations. You're not going to lose at least game one to Top Graves. What else has Trace been working on, though, is the question. He just played Maokai and Rumble and Top Morgana nearly exclusively right. last year, mixed in some Malphite at the very end, but known for a very small champion pool and yeah. a Quinn ban here. So perhaps they want to first pick the Fiora because that has been a typical counter pick to Fiora, but they are actually going to go for Alistair. So Fiora is still available, weirdly enough. All so right. is Lissandra. Yeah, Lissandra, the big one, immediately locked in by Jin Air. We'll end up seeing where that goes. Probably top, I would think. And uh, Lista as well. Kuzan's actually a very good Lissandra player, so oh, that's, that's definitely not guaranteed. Yeah, I and especially on red side, you are going to be saving that as a bit of a flex pick. If anything, I would think it's more likely to go to Kuzan, but we shall see. All right. They banned up three champions that Trace plays. So, curious. They may be a little bit worried about Trace. I think that's what we can <laughs> Wow. I'm not really wondering about that. You say it's curious, but... I think it's pretty obvious what that means, Monty. Come on. We live in a world where people are worried about Trace. Interesting. Yep. And we're worried about Trace playing Quinn and Graves. <laughs> that's that's the world we live in, man. Tristana, Elise are the two picks for yeah, the Empire. With all of, with all the uh, Callista picks and Callista priority, it's interesting to me that we haven't seen more Tristana picks because Tristana does do so well in lane against the Callista, but it really hasn't been a priority for the Korean teams. They're happy to play Lucian into that matchup most of the time, preferring him for his wave clear and his team fighting potential, his long range poke. So Thresh here. And Rek'Sai falling very low, actually Crush deciding he'd rather play Elise yeah. than the Rek'Sai, not a decision that we see frequently. So they will take jungle support here no matter what though to hide their last pick as a flex. So we're just waiting for the jungle pick to come in. I'm, like I said, I'm very surprised they decided to reveal it early. I hope Wings will play something more carry-oriented like a Kindred then. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, Misfortune, once again dropping through picks and bands. Yep. The Age of Misfortune is once again done, I think. Hecarim here. And uh, Lux would be cool to see too. Yeah, Lux should be able to farm it pretty easily against Victor. There's not a lot of all-in threat, so... Knowing that an assassin isn't going to be selected means that the Lux lock for the mid lane, this will be the third time this season we've seen it, but we've only seen yeah. it in the LeBlanc Lux matchup in both of the other games to this point. Seems and like Hecarim as an answer to Lissandra. Hecarim should be able to be harassed out of lane pretty easily by Lissandra. And if you're going to take Rek'Sai right now, why? <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, Janair. I don't like it when you draft like this. It's it's the old uh, try to pretend you're hiding a pick, but it's just a normal pick after all pick. Uh, Winged definitely prefers Lee Sin when he can get it. He is a Lee Sin specialist, but might be going for the more conventional Rek'Sai, and that will be the lock-in. So it looks like perhaps the victor they're happy to blind pick it. Jyn Air, as a team, just from looking at their last year, they have the same coaching staff, and they really like blind picking Victor. GBM used to do it all the time. It's a very safe blind pick. If you can take it away from your opponent, provides great team fighting, great burst, uh, great wave clear. So I understand why they are so enamored with the Victor. And perhaps they just wanted to take it away from Edge, who has been, uh, you know, played Azir. He's the only Azir player we've seen so far, and he played Gangplank in their first series, but interesting takeaway, but it does allow Edge to grab the Lux with relative safety. Sure enough. Huh. Em Empire lacking damage with their composition. I was gonna say, I mean, we've usually seen the Lux paired with another big bursting champion, right? And we don't really have that big, long-range, no. instant burst in any of the other uh, champions on the Empire. And realistically, Hippo's going to have to be absolutely huge to do enough damage in a team fight. Yeah. I, I think unless the Empire can really use the Tristana fast push effectively this game, they're going to have a very hard time combating the composition that well, Jyn Air is bringing to bear. If Hippo builds tank, I don't... I don't know what's going to happen. Guys. Yeah, Lux is great for the initial burst, but you have to have a finisher with Lux. Yeah. I mean, Soul would need to have a pretty uh, awesome position to do it. Let's see if they can handle it. The Empire versus Jyn Air, game number one. It's go time.
Something pretty cool I noticed about that intro at the end. What's that? They are in the order that they started playing Professional League of Legends from bottom to top. Oh, you're right. Because it's the that's why Score and Mad yeah. Life are on the bottom, and we see like Trey or Prey somewhere close to the bottom too. Interesting. So it, they made a pyramid of players. Cool. That's why I was like, why? Usually they just put Faker in the middle. I was like, why did Score and Mad Life? And then I realized what was going on there. That's because. Uh, it's a big year for the, it's all about the legacy, man. The legacy of Korean League of Legends. It's yeah, been, it's been a good one, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been great. And so we enter the 12th season of Champions right now. Yeah. This is our 10th as a casting duo here in Korea. It's our Hard to believe. 10th Champions anniversary, Doa. That's What'd right. What did you get me? Uh, I was going to ask you what you got me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't get each other anything, did we? We got the fans a great cast. That's right. <laughs> our gift is ourselves to you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's how full of ourselves we are. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> You've been rubbing off on me. I'm glad. <laughs> it's just not your fashion sense. Instilling great confidence in you, I see. That's right. I still wear skate shoes only. <laughs> You've got to. It's fun watching to you on ice. Well, and I'm not thing. talking about as if you were a Disney princess. <laughs> Or dead, hopefully. <laughs> no, I've got incredible balance. Balance like a really well-balanced cat. <laughs> Not just a regular cat. The cat with superior balancing skills. The most agile of all cats. <laughs> Went ice skating a while ago. I didn't fall down once. So Doha and Ice, we, it is actually a possibility. Something well, we could see in the future. I don't do the ice dancing thing, you know? It's never just, too late to learn, though. I just kind of go forward and, like, <laughs> stumble around a lot and sometimes stop when I want to. I think you see it's a technique you've also brought to your casting. <laughs> no, I can't ever stop there. <laughs> There's no stopping this one, no. <laughs> stopping is not a thing I do. Well, standard lanes here, and we'll see how this Lissandra does. Odds are Hippo's not going to have an easy time. Fans of Soul. Soul fighting. Probably family of soul, it would appear. I guess so. Aw, that's dude. adorable. <laughs> and that's soul. <laughs> also adorable. <laughs> soul adorable. Oh, God. Totes adorbs, Monty. <laughs> Totes <laughs> adorbs. Never you say that again. <laughs> Never you say. Did you just reveal your, like, southern heritage? There for <laughs> Never you say that again. I've well, se I'm secretly Georgian. I guess so. Wow. The truth comes out. I never wanted anybody to know, though. It was that traumatizing for you, to, for me saying totes adorbs. I revealed my valley girl heritage, and you revealed your uh, your uh, Mississippi roots, I guess, there. Gosh dang it. Wow. Y'all darn it. Wow. See, well, it's the it's 10th season. We should probably just reveal this stuff now, I guess, huh? It's the season of revelation. The secrets yep. are over, Doa. Yep. And totes for reals. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. I'll be hella honest with you. <laughs> That's Northern Californian. Uh, oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, man. There you go. Revealing your lack of California knowledge right That's there. That's the only part of California I've lived in. <laughs> <laughs> man. I like it, though. That's it's like saying that Wicked is a Rhode Island thing. Not cool. Is it? No. <laughs> Wicked with just an everywhere thing. I thought he was it's a uh, Boston thing. I thought oh he was my a God. top laner. <laughs> well, he was at one point. <laughs> yeah. I just said tubular a lot when I was a kid. Gnarly, you know? The occasional cowabunga. Yeah, you're basically just a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle soundboard. Sometimes that's how I consider replacing you on this guy. Righteous, <laughs> dude. <laughs> That's right. You know, if you don't spontaneously break out into vanilla ice's ninja rap from time to time, what what are you? You know? I ninja rap, therefore I am. I see. Great philosophy, courtesy of Doa. Go ninja, go ninja, go. That's why we're so obsessed with Shed. <laughs> He's definitely not going anywhere though. It's, it's I true. wish he would leave. <laughs> Stay ninja, <laughs> stay ninja, stay. That's a riot saying. Yeah. That's right. Ninja-like things. Well, guys, it's standard lanes, and uh, people are farming. It's our favorite part of the game. Yeah. Five minutes, no ganking. That's right. 
Reminds me of the old, uh, like, uh, 20 minutes, no rush, and StarCraft, you know? Got to get time to get those carriers, man. Yeah, otherwise, what are you going to do on Big Game Hunters? Yeah, exactly. BGH was the greatest. It was fun. And wait. Grabbing that blue, going after the Rift Scuttler. And uh, yeah, they're looking they for Alistair right now, so they're just checking around. Throwing the Sentinel in there. Gugger will go ahead. Nope, not going to clear it out while Che is there threatening the hook. Yep. And instead, just using that opportunity to see what they can see in the enemy jungle. Hello! Wow, Kuzan takes Laser. a big chunk of damage, but uh, still manages to trap Edge. But uh, yeah. Edge coming out with the pot advantage, but yeah, I guess so. in terms uh oh, wait, a little bit caught here, could be in trouble, and he's actually going to make it out. I really thought we were going to see a light binding come in from Edge and finish that one off. Well, no finisher. So what we've seen in the mid lane so far is that Edge has really been prioritizing using his spells for oh, harass. Oh, crush! That was a bit dangerous. Okay, no. Don't yeah. face check level six, Victor. Let's well, not do that. He knew they were there. He wanted to uh, prevent the recall, but that was not a great plan. Perhaps thought that Kuzan had already jumped Chaos Storm in the mid lane on that trade. Oh, could have been. Because yeah. otherwise, you wouldn't take that risk to walk in there. That's a good point. Che waiting in the brush. Soul squeezing his dragon as hard as he can. Oh, doing, so nothing in, do, doing nothing in lane, but standing there and squeezing his dragon. No, no. Soul is CSing. Che is the one standing out there. <laughs> okay. Walking back and forth, squeezing his dragon. Does that, does that serve you better? Yeah, yeah, sure, that's great. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> that is just disturbing. <laughs> I mean, see, Dragon Trainer Lulu is weird. That dragon just falls around, it's like her pal and stuff, yeah. but Tristana yeah. is just abusing that dragon. Yeah, it's definitely animal cruelty. Absolutely. Bare minimum. That's right. Man. Wow, Hippo really falling behind in this lane. Well, I mean, what did you expect? It's this is what I expected. Yeah, exactly. I just don't get the Hecarim pick here. That's that's the main thing. If you're not going to pick a lane matchup where Hecarim can actually do okay, then uh, you're basically just delaying your power spike. And what we've seen from Luxes so far is that, yes, they've been effective, but how have they been effective? They've been effective with MF and Lucian and other long-range forms of damage that when you land that Light Binding can, can combo with Lux to pull off a pick. Yeah, you're not going to kill anyone by yourself with the combo, but you can do it with that other burst. Yeah, especially if the, what we've typically seen from Lux itemization is the Frost Queen claim into the Morello Namacon, so going for the utility and the cooldown reduction. Right. So... It's, it's just not providing a whole lot of punch outside of the kind of Thunderlord's damage that is very good on Lux. Well, if you don't pick the other part of that burst elsewhere in your team, uh, yep. then uh, you really got to wonder what Lux's function in the team is going to be. Yeah. And you don't have the spellcasting power with the Tristana. You have to wait for her passive to rank up to get the range. Yeah. And by that time, yeah. everybody's going to be really, really tanky on the side of Jyn Air or immune to damage if you're Lissandra. So it just this doesn't seem like the most well thought out composition from EM Fire in terms of how they're actually going to execute the team fights. And Trace has been building up a 35 CS lead in under 10 minutes with no ganks. Wow. So he is crushing that lane right now. He's got to get a fast rod of ages. What is this Hecarim even going to do? Build Merc Treads first. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, Che gets caught. EM Fire. <laughs> Laser misses, and here comes a TP. Crush caught by that death sentence, and it looks like this may be first blood for Janair. It is winged. Gets that one. Just crushed that one around a bit. By the frozen tomb there. Yeah. Coming in from Trace, and Hippo not even going to follow up on that TP. Well, he I mean, all he has is a Doran shield and Burke Treads. He'd probably just die if he went in there. He's got Corrupting Potion, too. Come on, be fair. Well, OK, dog. <laughs> It doesn't make a difference. Janair going for the dragon. Dropping that pink ward just to make sure. Oh, there's a ward. Good. Oh, here comes Soul. Ah, here's the responding TP. Jane's gonna block off the choke though with the box. Yeah, they may and just then grab out a pilot. And yeah, that's that's a nice turnaround though. Yeah, not bad. Oh. We tried to steal it with the Prey Seeker, but okay. it did not work. So at all. EM Fire at least made a play right there. They yeah. took the CS in the top side to compensate for the first blood. And then 
they decided to take away the dragon. So Jynair not able to respond to that. But the question is now, how much CS is this Hecarim going to lose in the top side as a result? Because there is going to be a little bit of give and take right here. Well, he's losing some to the turret right now, and he's already 30-something down, so. Well, he's not going to lose much, actually. He gets back before the cannon minion dies, so that's actually really say, good. Well, he's really lucky the cannon minion got was picked on up by that, that wave. turret first. Yeah. Well, no, he's lucky the cannon minion was on that particular wave. Right. So, still 30 CS back, though, and still going to have problems scaling. Didn't get any kills, just gets the dragon. Yep. So, still big, big deficit here, built up by EM Fire. Yep. And all for a dragon, which isn't really going to be of a much immediate value because those percentage damage stats are only really worth something if you have items. And if you have no gold, you don't have items. That's true. You know, I thought of a positive thing to say about the Empire. And that is that Crush didn't pick Evelyn. So there's something they're already doing better than SKT. <laughs> that Evelyn from Bengi was so bad. I, my favorite part was where he got accidentally cocooned. The accidental <laughs> cocoon was the funniest, that's true. And Trace just blew him up on Graves. That was pretty funny. Oh, there's the turret. And not only did he get the turret, well, he is going to actually break the freeze right now, but had a chance to get a nice bounce off that wave and make Hippo's life even more difficult. But now Trace also has the opportunity to roam and try and make plays elsewhere on the map and snowball the turret advantage. Yeah. You know, they say, like, hippos are w actually one of the most dangerous animals in the world, but not this one, apparently. Well, they're only dangerous if you go into the rivers and try and swim with them, right? It's not. Well, they kill a lot of people every year, man. They do, from people who go in the rivers next to them. <laughs> or go too close to them. See, hippos aren't dangerous if you just stay away from them and you take their food. See, some even this hippo, though. It's not dangerous if you provoke him. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> not yet. We'll see where he gets like, when he's nice and fat if we get to the late game. Well, I mean, like we talked about, though, even if he does get big and tanky, is the M fire going to have enough sustained damage to win a team fight? It's going to need to be some, like, incredible play from Soul. Well, it looks like they're going to try and build him with a lot of MR, and... Kalista not the highest damage AD carry in the late game, so they would have to do a very good job of peeling for Kalista. But fortunately, if they have the box, Lissandra ultimate, yeah. and Gravity Field to peel for Pilot, so Kalista should be pretty well protected to get the number of necessary auto attacks off to take down a very tanky Hecarim. Probably. Well, not a lot's been going on down in this bot lane. It's been a mid and top focused game so far, according to our observer at least. And Wing now getting the edge, getting that first blood, and then thoroughly out farming his opponent in Crush 2. So the CS gap continues to grow at the top side. 50 now the differential, or 40 rather, now the differential between these two. This is Shown up by about 10. Well, it's already like a 3K gold lead for Jynair at 14 minutes. That's not insignificant. Certainly not. And it's all coming out of the jungle in top lane, as well as that first blood gold. So he's looking good, especially right. since EM Fire should be attempting to do more, I think, with the Elise Tristana combo. They picked. Looks like they picked a lot in the bottom side just for the lanes here with the Tristana. So if you're not doing anything with that and trading aggressively with the Callista, there's not a lot of point to picking the Tristana. Yeah. Edge having to use his ult to clear that wave. But the spooky ghosts are on the field. They're here for some quality haunting. They're here. Isn't that what you say when spooky ghosts pop up? Oh, Crush spotted by that ward does find it with a sweeper immediately, but they get good information, and that means that Trace is perfectly safe to push into the enemy jungle and start doing things like stealing Grom for free. They know he's there. He's not going to take the Grom. He's just going to go and just try and clear out some wards. Free Grom, man. It's awesome. Grom's for free. Yep. Would you take a free Grom? CS for nothing, and the Grom's for free. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that'd be a great song. <laughs> Parody of the making. If anyone was actually old enough in the League of Legends community to know that song. <laughs> to know Dire Straits? Yep. 
It's a great song. I guess we are. That's your next one. You can do that one. All right. Thanks, Noah. You're welcome. Just give me the uh, executive producer <laughs> credit or something, I guess. You know, credit where it's like, I'm sort of involved, but not really. Oh, hippo. Getting a bit of harm. But man is man is he down in CS. Yeah, fifteen minutes to be fifty down is ridiculous. Yeah it is. And but they picked it. They picked this matchup. It's a hard matchup. Hecarim certainly doesn't win that matchup. There's really nothing you can do besides try and walk up the wave and take cues to the face. Dragon in ten. You try and engage and get some damage down or something like that, you just get W'd. Yep. And that's really problematic because guess what? A lot of Hecarim's damage comes from his movement speed, and if he's not moving fast and he's frozen in place, he's just completely oh. stuffed. Uh, wing knocked up. Got caught with a cocoon, but Cougar will send him to freedom. There's just not what? enough follow-up right what there with the number of Jyn Air players that are already in the river. Yep. Plus, Kuzan faster to get over to the objective than Lux. Lux still clearing out the mid wave. So, Empire was able to take the first dragon of the game. And they are trying to equalize with this one, and it looks like they're going to have a pretty good opportunity to do that. Uh, they could be playing, a, I think, a little bit more aggressively right now. They have Trace's TP up. They certainly are now, stronger, but that means Winged is just going to go back and ult back in before they do it. So, making sure they get a buy through. There is a ward that Hippo could come in on if the Empire wants to flank this, but they're just going to let it go, I think. No. I think. Well, they might try and well, steal with a laser. Maybe. Uh, nope. There's not really a point to using a Lux laser right there because there's a Callista in this game. Your odds of stealing that are virtually zero. Yep. I feel like we've seen some virtually zero odds Baron steals around the uh, the world lately. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's true. You might. You if you're behind, you can always try. It's true. Yep. Especially if they have Sunfire Cave, the <laughs> item known to steal Baron more easily That's, than anything. That, you know? that is. Clutch Baron steal is always made with Sunfire Cave. That's right. We know. We've, we've seen it. <laughs> it definitely happened. It absolutely happened. Yeah. There's no way you can prove otherwise. So, uh, yeah. That's all I got to say about that. It's a fact. Historical fact. All right. Well, looks like Janair just wants to play very slow paced game. You'd think that they'd want to push this Cassandra advantage somewhere else on the map right now. Perhaps a little bit of Lux diving, but Lux has cleanse, so it might be tough. Yep. However, oh, they do have multiple forms of CC. Meanwhile, Trace is now taking it upon himself to solo steal the blue buff. Uh, well, Edge and Hippo are. Nope, Edge is going back to lane. Hippo trying to save that blue buff. Kuzan putting the pressure on Edge to try to make it easier for Trace, I guess. Can Trace get this? Uh, yep. Yeah, he can. Got it with a claw. Wow. The claw. The fade away claw. Let's turn around. Casually steal the blue buff. Look that well. Steal the blue buff. Walk away. Well, don't really walk if you're Lissandra. You kind of slide. I guess she sort of makes ice under herself, which propels her. Oh, boy. Oh, faked out by the theme song. <laughs> uh, we're back. All right. Meanwhile, the Rift Herald dies another embarrassing death. There's nothing dignified about the rip squatter is there. There's nothing at all. It's just no. terrible. He doesn't even give you a good buff. His buff, no. is, his buff <laughs> is garbage. Rift Herald is what you do when you have nothing else to do. That's, it's <laughs> true, isn't it? It's like the last resort. It's like you're, you basically sit there as a, as a player and you say, can I take some farm right now? No. OK, can I push tower? No. Can I get damage on any kind of objective? Can I go for no. dragon? No. Can I go? Can I, yeah. can I help my teammate? Can I gank? No. no. Okay, well, I better do Rift Herald then, because there is literally nothing else to do. Yeah, when you're uh, 40 CS up and just chilling out, might as well do the Rift Herald. Well, all it does is give minions, what, 40% attack speed. It doesn't even make them tankier. It looks like a Baron buff, but the, the buff is a lie, though. Wow, false advertising <laughs> from the Rift Squatter doesn't actually improve the durability of your minion wave, which is the most important aspect of Baron anyway, is crushing wave clear. True. So, basically garbage. Also, would you like to spend a lot of HP to try and kill it? If so, I have the place on the map for you to go before 20 minutes. It's the Baron pit. Yeah, looks like fun. No. Oh, 
whatever you say, Callista. Was that Callista? I think it was. I don't know, we're moving too fast. It's not kind of manly, though. I don't know. I don't know what the Korean voice is. Well. <laughs> well, at least Trace is getting damage done with his terrible buff. Hippo is... Hey, he's making it work for him, you know? Hippo is helpless with his alacrity enchantment. I don't even know why he has that this early. Uh, it's the only thing he could afford, I guess. <laughs> I don't I don't know. He's looking not for a well. really, really late Trinity Force. As you do. It's the staple of all Hecarim builds. Yep. Well, meanwhile, a dive. And guess what? Cliss is there, so Fate's call. Oh, Crush gets knocked up. There's a box. Gets caught as well. Trace TP's down. He could try something here. Ults himself, though. He takes a lot of damage. Hippo's ult doesn't connect, though. Five men in the bot lane. Looks like we could have a big fight here. Who's on coming down too? Looks like the turtle be taken out. That was a really weird situation. But in the end, <laughs> the Empire gets the turret. That, wow. That was odd. It was really <laughs> odd, especially because Edge actually managed to get down there and behind the turret faster than Kuzan could respond. So perhaps a little bit of a delay there from Kuzan on the rotation into the bottom lane. But it actually worked. In the end, they got the turret. So the the gold advantage definitely worthwhile for EM Fire burning that TP. And they also didn't lose anybody. Uh, they lost CS in that top lane again, which is coming at a premium right now for Hippo. Although he, he hasn't fallen any further behind, so I suppose that's a positive. And they did take some damage on the mid turret. Kuzan actually should have just stayed in mid and pushed down the tower. Yeah, man. Janair trying to set something up around Baron now. Baron is there, they grab Cougar, but will they follow up? The flay keeps in place for the moment. He doesn't have his ult at the moment, but looks like Janair's not going to engage on that. Nope, not yet. Trace also made the right decision to try and zone out and use his ultimate in on himself in that particular engagement. If he had used it on somebody else, it would have been bad. Also, he was exhausted, yeah. so. He had to. Extra good use of his ultimate on himself in that particular situation because he wouldn't have done very much damage. Yeah. Hippo is still way behind on CS, which I, I guess it makes him a hungry, hungry hippo. <laughs> yes, he is. He is, a, that. he is a hungry, hungry hippo right now, though, and there's no denying it. Is he behind? What other kind that of is hippo a, are you going to be? That is a terrible game, by the way. There is what? literally no. no skill involved. No, I will not have you trash talk <laughs> Hungry Hungry Hippo on this broadcast. That was a great game. It's and we all loved it. It's awful. Just because your, your bitter heart of cold steel won't accept the joy of Hungry Hungry Hippo doesn't mean you need to spread those lies to the rest of the world. It's a bad game. There's no skill involved. You just push a button. You know, it's... I hate to break it to you, but it's not geared towards adults. <laughs> it's for kids in elementary exactly. school. Exactly. Shouldn't we teach our kids how to be winners of skill-based games early? Uh, there's school for that. <laughs> no, wait. No, now it's just participation rooms for everyone, isn't it? <laughs> yep. I'm All sorry, Dora. Right. It's, uh, I guess the time for Hungry Hungry Hippos is over. Well, the time for that midterm might be over, too. Oh, no, maybe not. Ooh, he knocked that him out of the binding. Yep. <laughs> what a pal. Thanks, Peter. Dragon's up. Good guy, Googer. This is going to be a new meme. <laughs> I don't maybe. Good guy, Googer. Saves you when your team's about to get into. Here's, here's the dragon. Googer, whoa, over the wall on the Trace. Wasn't expecting that. Trace forced to ult himself. Jinair trying to save him. Can he get to the lantern? Doesn't need to. Gets over to the blue buff after all. Chase is fine then. Oh, Googer trapped in the box. He's got a wall to go through. Bush's wing back. Still gets taken out by Pilot. And Winged making a play on the crush, forces the flash there. Jinair probably going to be able to get the mid lane turned on this. Good guy, Googer. Engages on your team to give you a kill. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, bro. <laughs> well, that particular team fight. Oh, may not be done yet. And there's going to be a turret. It was actually a very good Lissandra play from Trace. Uh, so. Ended up getting caught out a little bit right there, but managed to pop his ult on himself, immediately flashed, and cast his E simultaneously to get over the wall. Like, actually super impressive Lissandra play, yeah. and a really well-calculated escape. Chase like, here's the lantern, and Trace is like, I don't need this. I have an E of my own. Chase like, well, wouldn't you have rather saved your summoner? And he's like, ha. oh, good point. 
He may not have been able to click it, considering yeah, the number of people that from EM Fire that were standing on top of him. Honestly, I don't know if he would have been able to get to the Lantern in time. Definitely making the safe play, and that will get them a Dragon, a mid lane turret, and a kill. It's not bad at all. And a 4k gold lead. Well, about 3k gold lead. But Pilot's Solid. here with his Rune and Hurricane now finally having a little bit of wave clear. That turret has taken basically no damage in this game. Well, given how that lane went, I can hardly say it's a surprise. Looks like Hippo is going to be going Iceborne Gauntlet. All right, well, a little bit of damage at least. A little bit of damage, more stickiness, oh, really. Okay. Helps you hold on. Oh, Hippo's like, no, no, I'm just kidding. Well, Hippo has good sustain uh, against Lissandra right now, but they uh, wow. are going to threaten the dive, and therefore Hippo will just immediately back off. Just an onslaught of oh. shadows right out of there. Well, oh, that's a long one. Take it, take it. Oh, it would have been cool if they could have grabbed him. Oh, well, uh, Crush knocked up. Couldn't be in trouble now. They're going to take him down, I think. We were trying to save his teammate, but it doesn't work out. Oh, nice he's caught. Talk. Immediately also get out of it. Pushes wing farther down the lane. I don't think he's going to be able to get out of this one. Really? No? Okay. The rend was there yeah. in the end, though. I was like, if he escaped from that situation, I have to change his name to the Cougar. Yeah, pilot's only friend, the rend. And now, Baron here at 26 minutes. Edge, not going to see much with that close range blue trinket. And nope. he is going to maybe blind snipe this. Oh, nope, just tickling oh. the Baron. <laughs> with his pink. Tickling the Baron, huh? Tickling the bear. I think that, that sounds, was. Uh, that sounds almost as bad as squeezing the dragon. I was, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure that was a form of torture in the Dark Ages. Like, I just oh. prefer all my jokes to be euphemisms, though. I guess so. Okay. Edge tickles the dragon. It's like, tell us where the rebels are hiding, or we'll be forced to tickle the dragon. <laughs> tickle the baron. Tickle the baron. Excuse I've, me. I've forgotten my own euphemism. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look at this to start off with. Uh, do see Rek'Sai ulting in nearly immediately. Crush gets caught out on the side. Crush actually missed a cocoon right there too, which was pretty bad. Winged also misplays. Walks backwards towards him and that therefore gives the Elise a chance to escape and has to flash to get the knock up. But really nice hook onto Googer. Yep. And then pretty easy cleanup, just waiting for that ult to go away. And when it does... Kaboom, you've been rendered. You've been rendered dead. So, not the most expiring performance or inspiring performance. It definitely is an not expiring not, it performance. Is, it is an expiring <laughs> performance. <laughs> I speak the truth. <laughs> Even when you don't want to. No. You try it. See, that's that's what happens, Doa. When you uh -huh. try and when you try and soften the blow, you yeah, just accidentally make it worse. It. It's like they're terrible. <laughs> uh. No, I, I mean they've done some nice things this game, and I mean they've managed to make it relatively long way into this one. And we've had a team like this pretty much every season in Korea that has really struggled. Yeah. But Samsung was one of those teams last year, and they are now three and zero at the top of this league. So. Well, you never know what the future is going to hold. I mean, if you look at the early MVP teams before they became uh, the World Championship winning uh, Samsung White. You would have say the, said the same things that you uh, say about EM Fire right now. You know, yeah. they could not win a game to save their life, but a couple years later, they're winning worlds. And Imagine Dragons is playing songs with them. So look where you can go if you just stick with it. Imagine Dragons will stand next to you. That's right. Play a guitar. They would have stood next to anyone that one though. So <laughs> it's not really about they had you. Had to be there. That's right. It's more about the spectacle. Wow, and uh, turrets going down all over the place. In favor of Jin Air. 10k gold ahead now. It's uh, it's looking like this one may not last a lot longer. Still zero kills in this game from Hippo, or and the rest of EM Fire. I mean, yeah. at, realistically, it, this is very close to a perfect game, except for the single dragon and single turret that they've been holding on to. Yeah, pretty much. It doesn't, doesn't get a whole lot more one-sided than this. How about adding some more dragons to the mix, Doa? Yeah, more kills, more dragons. Games and I have been surprisingly low kill. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Don't remind me. That's why we have to talk about tickling the Baron. <laughs> That's right, That's exactly why. 
Oh. Time to have Frigionaire to put their own squeeze on the dragon. And they will be taking their third of the game. So now it's time to deliver the death blow. Is it? That's right. Okay. Even though they don't have Baron anymore, and it will be difficult to push into the base. But it's it's time, huh? It's time. I think Monte Cristo is just ready for the game to be over, guys. I'm ready for this Lissandra Hecarim matchup to be over. Well, it wasn't a very great duel there. <laughs> All right, so everyone forward now. And they have put these waves in a pretty good position. Trace is actually, oh, I thought he was going to actually teleport somewhere. I got all excited, Doa. Oh, well. It was not to be. They're not really willing to close out on EM Fire until probably they get another Baron here for maximum safety. Yeah, pretty much. The best kind I of mean, safety. I it's mean, uh, it's the Korea way, right, in League of Legends. It's like... If you don't, if you haven't just taken your fifth dragon or baron, don't try to hit. That's what it seems like. Well, why not? I mean, they have a 10,000 gold lead. They are firmly in command of this one. They only have one of their own towers destroyed right now. You shouldn't take any risks that you don't have to when you can close this game as cleanly as possible. I can't really disagree with that. Got all the wards up. You are in the driver's seat. That's right. I haven't been in the driver's seat in a while, Doa. Me neither. The last time I drove a car was like 2013? Wow. 12? Something like that. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Oh, I rent cars all the time and when I go back to the States. I don't. I just pooch off friends and family. Aren't you happy to see me? <laughs> Give me your car. Drive me around. <laughs> oh, no, drive me around. Yeah, That's I don't right. drive. Yeah. Wow, even better. That's right. <laughs> Getting your personal chauffeurs. That's that's right. What are you, are you telling me you have a chauffeur in Korea? You expect one in the States too? Well, taxis are so great here that <laughs> yeah, you basically do. Wish I could take that with me. You can, it's in your pocket though, it's called Uber. I suppose. I've had mixed results. Uh oh, Whoa, Edge. Nearly caught there. Once again, lantern denied. <laughs> by Trace. <laughs> I don't need that lantern. I have a claw. That's right. Teleport claw. claw. Teleport claw. Shage is sorry. All right, all right, man. I'm just going to use it to check brushes then. <laughs> Fine. Meanwhile, Trace has been sitting in a ward that entire time. Time for more claw threat. Yep. Whoop. No. No death sentence on to Edge. Well, realistically, nothing is going to happen in this game until the next Baron. So, 25 seconds. Oh, boy. What a short time to wait. Yep. Well, Trace has to uh, push this wave away at first. Didn't look like it was very hard. I think it was quite easy for him. Yeah, he did it. That's a lot of AP. Janeiro setting up for this Baron. All right. Is Trace just going to sit in Fountain and wait for a TP? The answer is yes. Guess so. You really want to force a fight right here. Uh, Jin Air is a little bit spread out, so. Yeah, this EM is not fire. a great position. Uh oh, they're going to go in anyway, though. Here uh, comes Trace. The flank, he's coming from behind. Hippo activates uh -oh, his TP as well. Edge could be in trouble, gets caught with the Lissandra ultimate. Oh, but Trace is the one who gets blown up as Hippo and Cougar get into the back lines and delay the rest of Jin Air from engaging on this fight. Looks like they might take out Cougar anyway, but Hippo comes in with a big onslaught of shadows. Pilot picks up his support with that Fates Call, throws him back in, and now Hippo in big trouble too. Lux Laser takes a chunk out of Pilot, but it's not enough, and Jin Air going to win this fight anyway, despite a bit of an awkward start. Well, Trace got in there, but he got chain CC'd, so he couldn't actually use his Zonia's Hourglass, but he bought enough time that they wore down the front line in the interim, so he did just enough to turn that around, coupled with the fact that Jenner has an absolutely massive gold lead right now. And they're not even going to worry about Baron. They're just going to go right for this mid inhibitor, and with only Crush and Soul up, nobody's there to stop the three empire. Yep, so there's the inhib. Oh, they there we go. get what they came for in the end. Trace, they could probably going to be back up at 10 seconds. Yeah, they can go for the Baron for sure. No yeah. TP on Hippo. 
Uh, take a look at this, Trace flashes in, but Flash Cocoon and then Edge turns it around into a binding. So really nice turnaround right there as we take a look uh, at our picture in picture. But Gugger's ultimate doesn't do a whole lot because by the time his carriers are able to fight again, the tankiness has ended and they just turn on to Hippo with that bait call and take it away. And Baron's still at about a third health for Jin Air. They're getting a lot of pressure from EM Fire right now. And can they close it out? They can. EM Fire wants to fight though. Gugger with that ultimate. Crush gets caught by the Lissandra ultimate. And now it, the chase is on. <laughs> Gugger goes back in to die. Tries to delay long enough for the rest of the Empire. Whoa, that's a combo. Whoa, double kill for Edge. That works. <laughs> that was some really fun league of legends to Goodbye, watch. Goodbye, right bot lane. Just sitting right there waiting for them to be baited into oh, that choke. Man. And Edge with the big laser combined with Hippo's ultimate, too. They fell for that one so hard. That was, oh, wow. That was very amusing. That was beautiful. And right before Dragon comes up, too. Jinair looks like they'll still be able to grab it, but there go uh, their chances was of ending the game right there. It was a moral victory, though. It was, I guess. Like, well, we still got Dragon. <laughs> the, two kill, the two kills after after Baron. Yep. If I'm Jinair right now, if I'm Kuzan, I am laughing very hard at Pilot and Shay right now. Let's watch it again. That was yeah. a great moment. I Crush gets mounted up on the flank and immediately taken down. Now, they realize they can't actually fight this, so Gugger turns it, and then they just wait. They, there's a pink ward right here. They know there's no ward, and look at this. Oh, man. <laughs> Blam! Feels so good. Feels good, man. Humorous, but ultimately futile, I feel, Doa. Yeah. At least it makes it feel a bit better. If you're Edge. It was, a, it was a good bait, though, as far as turning Barons around and making them relatively useless. That was well, a very nice way to do it. Getting rid of it. The pink ward, I mean, they realized that they didn't have vision of that, and the over-pursuit into a choke point. And that's where you're like, I mean, it's a big mistake by Jinner. You have to be wondering, where is Lux? Why haven't I seen Lux ult? Why haven't I seen Hecarim ult? Probably don't want to chase into a choke while Hecarim still has ult up, so brain fade right there from Jin Air for sure. Yeah, well, I mean, they were so far ahead that you get those big eyes and you're like, all right, we can end it right now, and you forget the little things like Lux can destroy you. Or the big centaur. That's true. Who throws ghosts at you? Robo centaur. Ghost centaur. But not the spooky ghosts, they're different. There it goes to turret. Oh, hook on the crush. Pulled right into the box. He's going to be taken out pretty quick after he comes down, I would think. Yep, goodbye. And it could be an inhibitor for Jin Air. So in the end, nothing really slows down this team. As they move in for the win with the Baron buff. Let's see if they can take it. Luxalt is back up. Flash forward. There. Yep, there's the ult. A decent amount of, well, not a lot of damage, actually. Hippo in the middle of everything, but he's just going to take it out to 1v4. First Nexus Sura down, Trace will zone as himself, turn around for a bit of damage onto Gugger. That laser from Kuzan doing work too, and there goes the Nexus. This one is over, and Jin Air takes game one. GG. Yeah, so pretty methodical play from Jin Air right there. Uh, they got that huge advantage out of the top lane and transitioned it into a bunch of objectives. A little bit sloppy off of that last Baron, but they did what they had to do, and pretty much Jin Air just pound for pound outclassing EM Fire. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, there's really not much yeah, more to add to that. Jin Air just outplayed them pretty much across the board. And yeah, it wasn't perfect. Jin Air, you know, made a couple mistakes. One notable one towards the end there, but it was it was comical for us. That's It okay. was. It was amusing. Yeah. But really, Trace again coming up big for his team, playing that Lissandra, punishing the Hecarim matchup. There and he then, is. Uh, being the main playmaker on a lot of those opportunities to close out the game. Yeah. Very well played on that Lissandra. Certainly a possible MVP in the making there. And EM Fire again. You know, I mean, they're a new team. It's it's basically a brand new team. And you can't really expect a lot from these guys. Nope, not yet. It's all about development for them over the long term. That's right. That's He's right. got to hold it together for a while. 
Fuck up the Empire. Samsung's been there. Spenu's been there. They're both much better these days. I mean, I keep saying it. MVP became uh, the spring winning team, eventually won Worlds the next year. I mean, teams like this can end up being very good in the long run, so you can't get too discouraged over a uh, total beatdown like this was. But we'll see if they can muster up any resistance in game two. We'll be right back after this.